Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video on what is happening across the tropics. And this video is also a countdown video to the start of the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. So we are 88 days away from June 1st and so we're going to be talking a little bit, well quite a lot about the hurricane season for most of this video. But of course we're going to be looking at what is currently happening out there as well. So before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't done so already and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update. All right, and so as we take a look at the satellite imagery, we can definitely see here that there is some activity seen in parts of the Caribbean. So uh, extended from parts of the Leeward Islands going towards the southern portion of Hispaniola, we can see that cloud cluster. And as that continues towards the west, it can help to induce uh, maybe some inclement weather activity across some parts of Jamaica as we head to later today but for now persons across the island are most likely waking up to some clear skies as well as some beautiful sunshine this sunday morning in the vicinity of cuba and cayman islands we can see some of that activity within that area possibly inducing some overcast skies but overall nothing major happening right now across the caribbean and so uh we we definitely have some of that dry air that saharan dust that uh, that is infiltrating parts of the Eastern Caribbean. So looking at this map here, you can see that we have that mass of dust that is making its way towards the west. And so where we have more of those vibrant brown shades, that is where we have more of an abundance of that Saharan dust. And so some of that has entered the Caribbean uh, and is especially inducing some of those hazy skies for persons that live in the eastern section of the region. So nothing very major all right now but the saharan dust event is something that is annual as i mentioned in my previous video it's not something that is new and as we're going to be heading especially into the early months of the hurricane season the early part of the season uh june july or maybe even going into parts of august the saharan dust might pose a problem for developing cyclones uh because of course all of that dust really helps to prevent convective activity from developing so waves are likely going to be struggling to develop if there is an abundance of saharan dust out there once the hurricane season begins so now let's go ahead and talk about that Enso region. So the current value is minus 0.411. And as you can see for the past several days, it has been in that neutral phase, which is between minus 0.5 and 0.5. So uh, as I said in my previous videos, this was something that was forecasted that we would be entering Enso neutral conditions as we head into the spring and possibly the development of El Nino, which means the temperatures going to be more than 0.5 degrees celsius above normal and so when that happens usually there is more activity over in the eastern pacific however all of that activity helps to increase the wind shear across parts of the western atlantic and so that is what really helps uh to suppress development or a lot of major cyclones during El Nino seasons and it also helps to induce a bit of cooler sea surface temperatures and as a matter of fact uh, something else that helps to uh, result in cooler than normal temperatures is actually that Saharan dust because what it does is especially when it is in an abundance it helps to it acts as a shield so it helps to reflect the sunlight and as a result not all of the ocean surface is being fully penetrated by the rays of the sun which would under normal circumstances increase the ocean temperature so as a result uh, there are cooler than normal sea surface temperatures and that was something that actually happened last year so that uh, was an occurrence because we had a Saharan dust issue last year and that is what helped to suppress a lot of activity during the season though it was a La Nina season which would produce more tropical cyclones a lot more activity across the North Atlantic that Saharan dust uh, helped to uh, really suppress a lot of that activity Okay, so earlier I mentioned that uh, we're going to be, we have a prediction that is recently out and this is from the television station, uh, West. and so we can see the average number of named storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes. Now this is from 1991 to 2020. As of that time period, this is uh, the amount of storms that are considered 
average. And so as for the television station's forecast, we're seeing here that they are anticipating 14 to 18 named storms, of which 7 to 9 could become hurricanes and 2 to 4 major hurricanes. And so uh, the lower part of those ranges would be uh, something closer to being average. However, the latter part of that range of storms, hurricanes, and majors that are expected. So that would be the less anticipated scenario here, but uh, this is what they're calling for. And of course, forecasts, predictions, they do not have to always be correct because it is basically saying what could happen during this time frame. And I mean, we're not even at the start of the hurricane season just yet. So uh, predictions might be a bit off when compared to the actual activity at the end of the hurricane season. And so as I speak about that, could there be preseason activity this year so last year 2022 broke that uh streak of each year having uh, a storm that develops before the official start of the hurricane season and that went from 2015 to 2021 because last year broke that streak, uh, that eight-year streak that would have happened. And as we take a look at this map here, we can see the number of storms that develop off-season in each month because, of course, the season is from June to November, so the off-season period would be from December to May. And we see that May has the highest total of recorded storms at 52. So uh, it was even being considered at one point that the start of the hurricane season changes to May 15 instead of June 1st but that hasn't happened at least not as yet and uh, actually the National Hurricane Center has begun issuing outlooks from the 15th of May instead of the 1st of June because of that trend that uh, broke off last year. And so, of course, the formation of tropical cyclones is dependent on the favorability of the environment. And so if we have those favorable conditions setting in uh, as they're going to be heading throughout May, there is that possibility of preseason development. But of course, that is not something guaranteed uh, at this point in time. So only time will tell what the eventual outcome is going to be. And so guys, as we're going to be progressing to the hurricane season, we're definitely going to be noticing that uh, there is going to be increasing sea surface temperatures, of course, across the tropical Atlantic because we're going to be approaching summer. I mean, the hurricane season is really uh, mostly summer, the summer months. So there is going to be that warming of the tropical Atlantic. So sea surface temperatures are going to increase and that is going to favor a lot more convective activity taking place. But that is really it for this update video. I hope that you found it to be quite informative and so if you have any questions you can leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there and remember to always be otherwise.